having taken a close look at the QNAP TVS871T in a previous video, as well as completed the entire initial setup process, I'll leave links to both videos in the description box below, the next step involves creating a volume using the disk we have previously inserted. So let's do just that. As we've previously assigned a static IP to the NAS system, we are quickly able to connect to the unit using a standard internet browser, entering the credentials to log in and connect to the QTS operating system. Before we go any further with the NAS, we need to create a volume in order to store data, and conveniently right on the desktop we find the storage manager. This is a very powerful application which will be used to manage your disks and overall storage. The overview page shows our eight bays here, while the first three shaded bays signify the three physical disks we have already installed in order to get started. By entering the disks menu, we receive a visual representation of the NAS unit, as well as a list again showing the disks installed. By clicking on each disk we are given a health status below and can confirm all three disks are 6 terabytes in size. Ok, so let's now create a volume by entering the storage space menu, and hitting the new volume button in the top corner to open the new volume creation wizard. Here we have several options and it's important to choose the one that suits your needs best at this stage, as it cannot be changed later when data is held on the disks. In basic terms if you require several volumes you'll want to create a thin or thick volume. I see this as being best for small businesses with different departments, creating a separate volume for each department for example. Personally I'm using this as a home NAS and only need a single volume which I will expand over time. I don't need snapshots and am after performance, so I'm going to go ahead with a single static volume. I'll then select all three physical disks, and I have the option of creating a RAID 5 array, meaning I'll lose one disk's capacity as redundancy, but should one disk fail the NAS will still function without data loss. As I expand above 5 physical disks it would be good practice to increase this to RAID 6, which includes 2 disk redundancy, although we'll cover that at a later date. Nevertheless, as we can see this leaves me with just under 11 terabytes after the RAID 5 setup along with the formatting overhead. Next we can set an alert threshold, which I'm going to increase to 90%. Give the volume a name, I'm going to leave this as default, as well as changing the file system and encryption settings, which I'm going to leave as default for the moment. And we can finally create a shared folder in order to start saving data too. Finally we hit the next button, where we see a summary of all settings which we can check and hit finish. Volume creation then begins which could take some time depending upon the number and capacity of the disks inserted. Once complete we are ready to save data to a newly created volume, within the shared folder created as part of the setup, as well as add further shared folders if required. And that's all there is to it. Join me in the next video where we'll explore the QTS operating system in finer detail and begin adding further applications and functions to the system.